Ever try to drive a car without knowing which pedal's the gas? <laughs> yeah, talking cybersecurity without the basics of business finance, it's kind of like that. It's a shame, really. So yeah. much potential locked away. Right. But today, we're handing you the keys, the whole map, the works. We've got LinkedIn posts, company websites, even a cybersecurity business book and a SANS Institute keynote all lined up. By the end of this deep dive, you'll be fluent in the language of the CFO. Cold, hard cash. Music to their ears. So where do we even begin? Now those financial statements they cling to. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Let's unlock those, and you'll be speaking their language in no time. Okay, before anyone panics about an accounting lecture, promise it's all need to know relevant to your day-to-day -day stuff. Absolutely. First up, the income statement. Think of it as uh, your company's financial report card revenue, expenses, the whole shebang. It's how they report their performance, and it ultimately shows their profit. And guess what? Buried in there is that magical line item, SGNA. SGNA brings a bell vaguely. Help me out here. Sales, general, and administrative expenses. That's where your cybersecurity budget usually lives. See? Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so it's not just floating in the ether. It's tied to SGNA. How does that knowledge help us, though? Imagine showing how cybersecurity directly impacts those SGNA numbers. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can demonstrate how better security boosts revenue. Or maybe you show how it actually reduces those SGNA costs. Suddenly, you're not a cost center anymore. You're directly affecting the bottom line. That's a game changer right there. Right. And that's where understanding terms like EBITDA comes in handy. EBITDA. I've heard whispers. It stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's basically a measure of profitability from core operations. Investors love this stuff. So if we can tie security goals to improving EBITDA, showing how we contribute to a healthier bottom line, that's music to the executive suite's ears. Now you're getting it. All right, I'm starting to feel empowered here. What's next? Time for the balance sheet. Picture a snapshot of your company's assets, liabilities and equity. Think of it like a financial health checkup. One key concept here, capital expenditures or CapEx. CapEx, like a big scary monster. Not scary at all. These are your big investments that provide value over a long period. Think major infrastructure upgrades, that shiny new security platform you've been eyeing, stuff like that. So instead of seeing security improvements as just another expense, we position them as strategic investments that will benefit the company for years to come. Exactly. Framing it as CapEx is music to an executive's ears. It shows you're thinking long-term about growing the company's value. It's like investing in a property that appreciates in value rather than just renting a place to crash. Okay, that analogy landed. But the cash flow statement, I gotta admit, that one always felt like a bit of a mystery. It's about tracking where the money's going, plain and simple. Cash in, cash out. Now, you might not be directly managing the company's cash flow as a security pro, but you can certainly influence it. Think about the vendors you work with, those contracts you negotiate. You're right. If we score a better deal, longer payment terms, that directly impacts cash flow. 100%. Something as small as extending payment terms from net 30 to net 45 can make a big difference to the company's bottom line. Small changes, big impact. Makes you think twice about sweating the small stuff. I remember early in my career pushing for a new firewall. Knew it was crucial, but man, did I go in unprepared. No numbers, no connection to the bottom line. Definitely not speaking their language. Oof, I can imagine how that went down. Let's just say that firewall didn't happen. And to add insult to injury, months later, a security breach. One that firewall probably would have stopped in its tracks. Brutally expensive lesson on connecting security to actual business value. Yeah, those lessons stick with you. But hey, that's why we're here, right? To arm everyone with the tools to avoid those pitfalls. All right, so we've deciphered those financial statements. But how do we actually connect cybersecurity to what the company really cares about. It's like having all the ingredients, but no recipe, you know. That's where understanding your company's business model comes in. Think big picture. One of our sources talks about this tool called the Business Model Canvas. Helps you visualize how everything connects, where the money is made, and how security plays a crucial role in all of it. Okay, color me intrigued. Break this canvas thing down for me. So picture a one-page diagram, right? Lays out your company's DNA. You've got your customers, the value you offer them, their core value proposition, how you reach those customers, even how you actually generate revenue from all of this. Sounds comprehensive. It is. 
And by mapping all of this out, you start to see the connections, right? How each department contributes and where security fits into that whole ecosystem. So we're not just off in a corner somewhere. We can actually pinpoint how security directly supports sales, marketing, protects key partnerships, even strengthens that core value proposition you mentioned. We're talking about a seat at the table, right? Exactly. Cybersecurity becomes a strategic asset, not just a cost center. Speaking of strategic advantages, that brings us to another gem from our sources, value chains. Value chains. Sounds a little like we're talking fine jewelry here. Not quite, but just as valuable in the business world. Think of a value chain as a map, right? It shows all the activities your company does to create a product or deliver a service. From the very beginning design production, all the way to marketing and delivery, each step adds value or uh, takes it away if things go south. Okay, starting to see the bigger picture here. Where does security fit into this chain, though? Are we just one link? It's bigger than that. We're talking about being woven throughout the entire chain. A security issue, it can disrupt any part of that chain, costing time, money, reputation, you name it. But, and here's the kicker, a strong security setup that can actually become a competitive advantage. Now that's the kind of talk I like to hear. Security. From cost saver to secret weapon. Give me an example. Make it real for me. The San S Institute keynote, they had a perfect one. They were talking about moving their whole security network operations center, SNOC, for short. That's not just moving a couple of desks. Bro, right? oh, it was huge. Yeah. A massive undertaking. But they documented the whole thing meticulously, yeah. trained their team, made sure there was minimal disruption. And in doing so, they gained all these incredible insights, best practices, really valuable stuff. So they essentially turned a complex security operation into knowledge into something they could use to their advantage. Bingo. They developed this expertise, this niche knowledge that most of their competitors probably hadn't even thought about. And that that's where security teams have a real opportunity. One of our sources called it proprietary learning. Because we're the ones on the front lines, right? We see the risks, the vulnerabilities, the stuff other departments might not even know to worry about. Exactly. You have a unique perspective. So what do you do with that? You ask questions. Don't wait for someone to hand you a business model canvas. Talk to your colleagues in different departments. Figure out what keeps them up at night, what your priorities are. Then, and here's the magic, figure out how security initiatives can directly help them achieve their goals. So instead of being the department of no, we're the strategic partners helping our colleagues innovate, do more, and stay ahead of those risks. Now you're thinking like a true business-minded security pro. You're seeing the bigger picture. Security, it's not a separate entity. It's woven into the very fabric of the organization. We've got the financials down, the business models, the strategies, but it's like having a high-powered engine with no steering wheel if we can't actually communicate these ideas, get people on board. Absolutely. It's not just about knowing the business side. It's about leading with, well, EQ, emotional intelligence. Our sources, especially that Sands Institute keynote, they hammered that point home. Right, because we could have all the technical know-how in the world, but if we can't navigate the human element, the relationships, the motivations, well, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Exactly. You're often the ones driving change, sometimes with limited resources, and you're dealing with people's anxieties, their resistance. That's where EQ, self-awareness, empathy, building those strong connections becomes so crucial. So it's not enough to be the tech whiz. We've got to connect with people, understand where they're coming from. One LinkedIn post put it perfectly. The most effective leaders, they tailor their communication. Yeah. Right? Recognize that what works for one person might fall flat for another. It's about understanding those individual motivations. Reminds me of this time I was leading a software upgrade, big important project. We were all about the tech improvements, but we totally missed how it would impact our marketing and sales teams. Oh, I've been there. What happened? They were worried about disruptions, their campaigns, their workflow, uh. stuff we hadn't even considered. So focused on the tech, we forgot to bring everyone along. A classic example of where a little EQ goes a long way. Imagine if you had looped them in early on, address those concerns head on. Could have been a much smoother process. You're preaching to the choir here, but how do we actually develop EQ? It's not like it's a software update, you know? Takes practice, like any skill. One thing, pay attention to leaders you admire, in security, even outside of it. How do they communicate? How do they handle those tough conversations? How do they build rapport? Become a student of leadership, always learning. I like it. Exactly. 
And if you're looking for a practical guide, our source has mentioned this CSO evolution, yeah. full of actionable advice for security pros who want to bridge that gap between tech and leadership. Add it to the reading list. But for our listeners who want to take action right now, what's one thing they can do today? Reach out to someone in your finance department. Seriously, schedule a quick chat. Ask to pick their brain about the company financials. Love it. Stepping outside those comfort zones, speaking the language of business. What if, instead of being the department of no, we're the ones unlocking new opportunities, strategic partners? Now that's a future worth striving for. Couldn't agree more. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into cybersecurity through a business lens. Remember, it's not just about the technology. It's about understanding the heart of your business, speaking the language, and building those crucial bridges. So go out there, become those business-savvy security leaders we know you can be. Until next time.